Baby Driver is a movie that I've had in my brain for maybe more than 20 years now. It started with me listening to a song uh, which is in the movie, uh, Bell Bottoms by the John Spencer Blues Explosion. And I remember listening to that song a lot when I was like 21 years old and thinking, this would make a great car chase. You know, this would be a great car chase in a, in a film with this music. And I think, you know, in the subsequent years, I sort of chewed on what exactly that movie was. And then it started to turn into a story of a, a young driver who cannot exist without music. And then I started to build the film around this character. So I like the idea of like a film driven by music that is about a character who is entirely motivated and sometimes possessed by music. And so the idea of doing an action film and a car chase film that's like set to music is, is literally like a dream movie for me. Working with a cinematographer and a stunt team and like a physical effects team is like, how do we pull this off? And which parts can be, you know, a stunt driver, which parts can be the actors, what rigs we use, um, how exactly we pull off some of the physical stunts. And, you know, for the most part, there are lots of moments in the film where the, the stunts are just real with no rigs, no wires, no green screen. There's that stunt in the alley in the first chase where he does a sort of a, like a, a 180 in, 180 out, um, which is an amazing bit of driving by Jeremy Fry, and that's all completely real. There's no sort of trickery in that sequence. Sometimes in action scenes, you would occasionally be able to play the music out loud. So in that opening sequence when he's walking down the street and getting the coffees, that song was playing, like Harlem Shuffle was playing out loud in the street. Other scenes, it's only in Ansel's ears, and maybe like Ansel has it in his ears, I can hear it on my headphones, and the camera operator can hear it, but nobody else. Um, and then other times, we had to play like a click track or something, because sometimes when there's like guns firing, Nobody can hear anything. <laughs> so in those cases, then a, then a really amazing thing happens is the choreographer, uh, Ryan Hefferton, who is an amazing genius, he would um, get the actors to think in counts. So say, for example, a scene where people are shooting in time of the music, he would get them to memorize this part of the rhythm. So it would be a thing like Ryan going up to John Hamm and saying, this next bit is you going da 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 and like sort of like get that in your head. It was always intended to be an ensemble movie in the sense that the, basically the plot of the movie is that try as he might, Baby cannot like escape his work colleagues. <laughs> So I think it's a, really a movie about a kid who is a loner and likes doing his job, but would rather do it without having to talk to anybody. And there's a point where he just can't not fraternize with these criminals. And so I like the idea then of these other characters being sort of seductive in their own way um, and sort of reeling him in to some extent. So. Some people are kind of more like um, supportive or friendlier in places like sort of John Hamm, Kevin Spacey sometimes. You know, Jamie like immediately poses himself as like a, like a wild card and a possible threat to Baby. So really the idea of the movie is like sort of like take this loner and sort of like put him in to a gang that he doesn't really want to be in. It was an amazing process uh, finding Baby because I had written this character and I had, you know, before we actually started making it, I think the script had been finished for like, you know, like uh, three years, maybe four years. Um, so I'd been thinking about people during, I'd gone off and made another film and I was always like sort of keep my eye on 
young actors. And I'd actually seen Ansel in The Fault in Our Stars. Um, and then sort of we started uh, like auditioning young actors to play this part. And he was one of the people that came up. And so he wasn't how I originally pictured the character. I think maybe in my head I'd always imagine him, maybe because I'm like short. I'd always imagine him being shorter. <laughs> but I have to say, I can't imagine anybody else doing it now. And when he came to audition, I think the thing that really like charmed me about him was the fact that he's very musical and he can play lots of instruments. And in fact, one of my favorite things in the movie, one of my favorite scenes with Ansel is a scene when their Spacey is briefing them on the next job. And Ansel has his headphones in and is listening to Dave Brubeck and starts like playing the piano on the table. And there's something sort of so beguiling and uh, hypnotic about watching like a 21 year old actor play along to some jazz from like the 50s. I hope audiences enjoy Baby Driver for the very same reasons that I made it, is that like, I wanted to make uh, like an energetic, music-driven action film with characters that you love and characters that you're scared of and like, you know, a, a wild ride into a side of life that we don't get to experience.